from a coach perspective, you've worked in high performance sport at the top level, as well as now in doing great things in the private sector. What, what are the pros and cons of, of uh, the two? Um, <clears throat> well, I think uh, when I was shifting across from pro to private, I thought the hours might have uh, been a little bit better. Um, but then, uh, then when I moved over, I, uh, I lost two of my coaches. We rolled into fires. We rolled into a blackout. We rolled into COVID. Um, so it's been a, a good fun two years in the private sector, mate. So I think uh, my opinion is probably a little bit skewed. Um, but there's no doubt for me, um, from a family point of view, uh, the hours are significantly better, especially around the weekends and everything. So um, the, the pros for private are probably a little bit more controlled with ours. Um, I think one of the, the big things, people often ask me, do I miss pro sport and stuff like that? And, and to be honest, um, I think it's a little bit like uh, high school. Uh, I think once you graduate high school, you look back and you think, fuck, how good was high school? You know, socially, you're with your friends every day and stuff like that. You kind of forget all the assessments and all the annoying work and stuff you had to actually do. What about for the coach's perspective? Like, do you feel from a development point of view, if you had to pick one to start with, would you prefer developing yourself in the high performance sport realm or do you think private sector is a better place to start? Uh, to be brutally honest, I think it's six or one, half a nose or the other. I don't think... I don't think the category is the maker. It's the coaches around you that will make it. Um, if you're in high-performance sport with terrible people, it's not great. By the same token, if you're in the private sector with terrible people, it's not great. Um, I do believe when it comes to a lot of young coaches at the moment, um, I, I still... And to be honest, I don't think it's going to change. I think the, the shininess of a, a pro sport logo is always going to be attractive to coaches. And that's not to say it shouldn't be. I, I think there's a lot of amazing things in pro sport. Like, I mean, the, the experiences I had were phenomenal. Um, but again, it, it depends who you're with. For the coaches listening in, um, do you feel in your experience there's personality traits and uh, coaching skill sets that are more suited to private sector compared to high performance sport? Or do you think a good coach is a good coach. Personally, I think uh, I think uh, a good coach is a good coach. Um, I've got Woody here trying to wrap me up, so clearly, uh, clearly his use of the voice is terrible because he's trying to text here. Um, but we can we can certainly think. I think from a from a, a private and a pro, um, my strongest coaches are those ones that have had experience in team environments. Now, that's not to put down anyone that works individual. But our environment is on a gym floor in group settings. So my strongest coaches are those ones that have worked in group settings. Um, that doesn't mean it has to be pro, but it certainly has to be at a level where they have to control a team environment. For those listening in that are a coach or an athlete, where can we find Athlete Authority and um, what is the best place to get in contact with you guys? Right. The, uh, the old socials are probably the easiest on uh, Instagram, at Athletes Authority. Um, that's an easy follow. And then I'm uh, at Performance Coach underscore Wilmot. Um, but, uh, but feel free to, to follow both. But you'll probably get, get one or the other on, uh, on one of them. So go for it. Beautiful. Thanks, Thanks. mate. Thanks, mate.